Have you ever wondered how rich the King of England is and what he's worth to the UK economy? In short, the King is worth £67.5 billion and contributes at least £1.766 billion per year to the UK economy and costs the UK taxpayer £4.50 per year each. The £67.5 billion is split between the King's personal wealth, the Crown Estate and other royal institutions' tangible assets, and significant intangible value brought to the UK economy, according to Brand Finance, the world's leading brand valuation consultancy. The British monarchy is a fascinating institution that has evolved over the centuries, from absolute power to constitutional monarchy, from divine right to popular support, and from empire to commonwealth. Today, the British monarchy is a symbolic and ceremonial role that represents continuity, tradition, and national identity, and generates tourism, diplomacy, and philanthropy. The British monarchy is also one of the oldest and wealthiest royal families in the world, with a history that spans over a thousand years, and a net worth estimated to be in the billions. In this video, we'll explore the sources and distribution of the British monarchy's wealth, the controversies and criticisms of its funding and spending, and the benefits and drawbacks of its economic impact on the UK and beyond. So, if you're ready to delve into the realm of kings and queens, princes and princesses, crowns and scepters, join us for this enlightening journey into the monarchy's finances. But before we get into it, please remember to hit that like button and subscribe. We will cover some important and controversial topics on this channel, and your support will really help us with the algorithm. The British monarchy has a long and fascinating history spanning a millennium. The idea of a united England with a single king to rule over it began with the Anglo-Saxon kings of England in the early Middle Ages. However, the Norman Conquest in 1066 marked the true beginning of the British monarchy as we know it today. Throughout this long and storied history, the British monarchy has amassed great wealth and power. King William started it all by acquiring land and ensuring his subjects paid revenue, tolls, and taxes. And over the centuries, the British royal family's accumulation of land and assets increased throughout the Kingdom of England. At its height, the monarchy controlled vast tracts of land throughout the British Isles, including much of modern-day England and Scotland. At certain points in history, the monarchy's wealth was also derived from other sources, such as taxes and trade. Over the centuries, the British monarchy also significantly shaped the country and Western politics. One notable example is the Magna Carta, signed by King John in 1215. This document established the principle that even the king was subject to the law, and laid the foundation for modern constitutional government. Despite these laws and changes, the British monarchy has remained a powerful and influential institution throughout the centuries. In fact, it is one of the oldest and most wealthy royal families in the world, with a net worth estimated to be in the billions of pounds. But what is the current state of the British monarchy's wealth, and how does it contribute to the UK's economy? Let's take a closer look. The current monarch of the UK is King Charles III, who ascended to the throne after the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth II. King Charles III is the head of the royal family, one of the wealthiest in the world. According to a recent article on Forbes, King Charles III's personal net worth is estimated at $500 million. Yet, he oversees north of $42 billion in assets as the head of the monarchy. So, where does it all come from? The majority of the monarchy's yearly income comes from the sovereign grant, which is funded by taxpayers and covers the cost of running the royal household and carrying out official duties. The grant is set at 25% of the profits generated by the Crown Estate, a vast property portfolio including historical buildings, urban developments, and farmland. King Charles III also receives income from the Duchy of Cornwall, a private estate that generates revenue from land holdings and other investments. The royal family's most notable assets include Buckingham Palace, the Crown Jewels, and the collection of royal artworks and antiques. However, it is worth noting that many of these assets are considered part of the national heritage and are not owned by King Charles personally. When it comes to personal net worth, King Charles III's assets include Highgrove House, his private residence, and Burkhall, a property in Scotland. He also has a personal investment portfolio and has inherited wealth from the Queen Mother and Queen Elizabeth II. While Charles's net worth is significant, it is worth noting that it's still relatively small compared to other wealthy individuals in the UK and worldwide. For example, businessman Jim Ratcliffe, the founder of the chemical company Ineos, 
has a personal net worth of over $23.4 billion, according to Forbes, making him the wealthiest person in the UK and putting him over 30 times richer than the personal wealth of the king. King Charles III's net worth also pales in comparison to that of some of the world's wealthiest individuals, such as Amazon founder Jeff Bezos, who has had a net worth of over $170 billion. So, the king and the monarchy possess vast wealth, but he also substantially contributes to the UK economy. The monarchy has played a vital role in promoting tourism in the country, with millions of people visiting the UK each year to see royal palaces, castles, and other historical sites. The tourism industry is estimated to be worth billions of pounds to the UK economy, and the monarchy's contribution to this figure is undoubtedly significant. According to a report by Brand Finance, the British monarchy is valued at £67.5 billion, contributing around £1.8 billion to the UK economy each year. This includes the revenue generated by tourism, the sale of royal souvenirs, and other related industries. In addition, the monarchy also contributes to the UK economy through charitable donations, with many members of the royal family actively involved in various philanthropic causes, King Charles in particular. However, the cost of the monarchy has been a topic of debate and controversy. Some argue that the royals contribute more to the UK than they cost, and more than the direct monetary figures mentioned previously, while others question the cost and relevance of the institution in the modern era. For example, People Before Profit leader Jerry Carroll believes spending hundreds of millions to maintain the royals' lifestyle and properties would be better spent on other priorities, especially as inequality deepens and the social security net erodes for those in need. There is also growing scrutiny on the source of the monarch's wealth, with the UK's history of colonialism, involvement in the transatlantic slave trade, holding the largest empire the world has ever seen, that at one point ruled over 23% of the world's population. Nothing illustrates this connection more than the 105.6 carat Kohinoor diamond taken from India in 1849. It is currently set in the crown of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, and displayed in the Tower of London with the other UK crown jewels. The government of India, Iran, Pakistan and Afghanistan have all claimed ownership of the jewel and demanded its return, requests that the British government has rejected. In April 2023, King Charles announced his cooperation with an independent study exploring the relationship between the monarchy and the 17th and 18th century slave trades. On the other hand, economist Esmond Burney sees the royals as a cultural asset akin to Shakespeare, whose value cannot be easily quantified. He also points out that the annual cost of the monarchy is less than one thousandth of the NHS budget, and that the Royal Arts Collection is already owned by a charitable commission. Bernie also notes that nationalising the royal assets would not necessarily benefit the public, as inheritance tax would quickly strip down their wealth, and some properties and artworks might end up in the hands of Middle Eastern wealth funds. Additionally, the UK's constitutional arrangement provides an orderly and peaceful transfer of head of state and connects the nation to its history and heritage. However, one particular area of contention has been the sovereign grant, which is the public funding supporting the monarchy. The grant is frequently criticised by some for being too expensive. The grant is calculated as a percentage of the profits generated by the Crown Estate, a collection of properties and assets. In 2021 to 2022, the sovereign grant was worth £85.9 million, which some argue is too high, especially considering the current economic climate. That said, the cost to each British person to finance the monarchy has been estimated at just 1p a day. Despite the controversy surrounding the cost of the monarchy, the economic impact of the monarchy cannot be ignored. As the current monarch, King Charles III is vital in promoting UK businesses and industries, particularly with Middle Eastern nations. The monarchy is a powerful symbol of British culture and tradition. Their patronage of various industries and businesses can significantly boost the UK economy. In addition to promoting UK businesses, King Charles III's economic impact through the monarchy could be seen in other areas of the economy. For example, the monarchy has been involved in various initiatives to promote sustainability and environmental conservation, which can positively impact the UK economy in the long term. The king, who has had a deep connection to the environment, is often vocal about environmental issues and has long advocated for sustainable development. He is known for his strong stance on climate change and has been referred to as the climate king by some commentators. 
Sustainability is a critical component of modern society, as highlighted by Britannica's definition of sustainable development as the process of social advancement that accommodates the needs of current and future generations and that successfully integrates economic, social and environmental considerations in decision-making. The monarchy's involvement in promoting sustainability and environmental conservation can raise awareness and encourage positive change towards a more sustainable future. While it may not be the primary focus of the monarchy, its involvement can have a significant positive impact. So, how are the royal finances likely to change under Charles' reign? During King Charles' reign, there is expected to be a renewed focus on financial responsibility within the royal family. Not too dissimilarly to his mother, who has been known to be more conservative with the royal finances, Charles is likely to take an even more streamlined approach to expenses. This could involve cutting back on the number of working royals and reducing some of the lavish lifestyles associated with the royal family in the past, including reducing the number of staff and scaling back on travel expenses. This process has already started. Additionally, it is expected that Charles will continue to take steps to make the royal family more cost-effective. This could involve consolidating some existing royal residences, reducing the number of royal engagements, and focusing on those essential to the monarchy's overall impact and image. By streamlining expenses and reducing costs, Charles will not only hope to appease critics of the monarchy, but also ensure that the family's finances are sustainable for future generations. The British monarchy has been a prominent figure in British society for centuries, and its impact cannot be ignored. King Charles III's net worth may be incredibly high for an individual who's inherited wealth, but it's undeniable that the monarchy as an institution contributes significantly to the UK economy. However, the value of the monarchy to British society is still a subject of an ongoing debate, which is likely to only be amplified under Charles's reign. While many argue that the monarchy provides a sense of national identity and pride, others criticise the cost of the monarchy to taxpayers and question its relevance in the modern era. Despite these debates, the British monarchy remains a cultural icon and symbol of tradition and stability in the UK. Its continued relevance is evidenced by the widespread public interest and fascination with the royal family and the significance of major royal events such as weddings and the upcoming coronation in May 2023. Looking to the future, it remains to be seen how the monarchy will evolve and adapt to changing times. However, the institution will continue to play a central role in British society, whether as a tourist attraction, a source of national pride, or a symbol of tradition and continuity. As this is a controversial one, we'd love for you to share your thoughts on the monarchy and its role in British society. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more controversial topics.